A male in his 30s presents with chest pain and has a chest x-ray. What does it show? Let's go through the case. Now there's a clear abnormality on the right side of the mediastinum. Compare this to a normal case and we can see the right side of mediastinal contour is abnormal. When you see this, ask yourself if you can see the normal mediastinal structures. Now I think we can see the right heart border, the hilum, and we can just about see a normal azagous contour. Now these are all structures within the middle mediastinum. As we can see these clearly, it suggests we're dealing with something that's sitting within the anterior or posterior mediastinum. This can be referred to as the hilum overlay sign. If this is an anterior mediastinal lesion, we can think of the differential as the four Ts. Thymic epithelial tumour, teratoma and germ cell tumour, thyroid goiter and terrible lymphoma. However, this could also sit within the posterior mediastinum. To think of the differential for this, we need to consider what structures live in the posterior mediastinum. We have the descending aorta, so aneurysms here can give you an abnormality on chest x-ray. There are nerve roots arising from the spine, so think about schwannomas. Think about bone lesions arising from the spine. And we also have the GI tract, so the esophagus heading into the stomach. With our lesion, we can see this extends from the level of the clavicle all the way down to the diaphragm. So a completely dilated esophagus could account for this. The differential for a diffusely dilated esophagus can be split into two. One, a stricture of the gastroesophageal junction, either benign or malignant. And two, an issue with the motility of the esophagus. Here we consider achalasia, scleroderma and Chagas disease. I'll also mention that if the esophagus has been resected, the stomach can be pulled up into the chest called a gastric pull-up. And this can have a similar appearance on chest x-ray. In this case, with no known past medical history, a CT scan was done and we'll see dilatation of the esophagus which accounts for the x-ray abnormality. There is no obstructing lesion at the GOJ and a barium swallow showed the classic bird beak sign. This is a case of achalasia. In achalasia, there is failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to relax with loss of peristalsis. Barium swallow can confirm the dilatation and the classic tapering of the distal esophagus as well as looking for abnormalities in peristalsis. Treatment involves lifestyle changes, esophageal dilatation or surgery. This x-ray is all about recognising the mediastinal abnormality and placing it outside of the middle mediastinum and realising a tubular structure occupying the whole of the right side of the mediastinum could represent esophageal dilatation.